So, ladies and gentlemen, when we're going over substitution, um, all right, basically what we're doing is we're solving a system. But like we did before, we solved a system by graphing, right? And for those of you that did not do the homework on uh, our substitution and you need any extra help, you didn't understand or you weren't here, here's again these examples of what we did. So for basically on substitution, um, what we're looking into doing is rather than solving for that point where they intersect, we're going to solve for the x and the y coordinate. Um, we're going to solve for the x and y coordinate that make both of these equations true. Um, so Justin, I'm having a hard time. So basically what we're going to be doing is we need to solve for x and we need to solve for y. And the basis of substitution, what we're going to do is we're going to solve for one variable and plug it in the value of that variable and plug that into the other equation. So when we're going to substitution, the substitution is best applied when we have a variable that has a coefficient of 1 or negative 1. So we look at this system. And in this system, do we have an equation with, or a variable with a coefficient of 1 or negative 1? Yes. Yeah. We have x has a coefficient of 1 and y has a coefficient of 1. Ian, aren't you in this group over here? Aren't you in this group over here? Yes, you are. You should be writing down notes over here because now you're missing two days that you need to be going over. Um, so you can go and sit in the seat over there so you can take notes on this one, OK? Um, so yes, so basically we can choose which one we want to solve for. Which one would you like to solve for? The top one. Well, I know. Which variable, x or for y? x. You guys both understand, though, that they have a variable of 1. And the reason why that's important is because solving for x is very easy. When you have a coefficient of 1, all you have to do is undo adding or subtracting, right? You know, if this was like 3x, then to solve for x, you'd have to subtract y and then divide by 3, right? So we only want to solve for variables when the coefficient is 1. So to do that, I just have x plus y equals 6. I subtract to y. x equals negative y plus 6, right? So what I'm saying is x equals negative y plus 6. All right? The value of x is equal to the expression negative y plus 6. So just like when we looked at functions, if I said f of x equals 2x, and then I say, what is f of 7? Where'd you put the 7 in for? Yeah, you put the 7 in for x. Because x was equal to 7. Now x is equal to an expression. It's not equal to a number. It's equal to an expression. However, I can now take what x is equal to and plug it into the other equation. So x is equal to negative y plus 6 minus 2y equals negative 2. Does everybody see what I did? I just took the value of x and I plugged it in. And the reason why this is important is because now I have an equation with the variable y. And you can, solve for a, you can solve an equation with only one variable, right? But it's more difficult when you have two equations. So now I apply distributive property. So I have negative 3y plus 18 minus 2y equals negative 2. I rewrite this so my terms are next to each other. Negative 3y minus 2y is a negative 5y plus 18 equals negative 2, subtract 18, subtract 18. Negative 5y equals negative 20. Divide by negative 5, divide by negative 5. y equals positive 4. Does everybody see all the math that I just did for that? Anybody have any questions? And you should be writing this down. Yeah. Anybody have any questions? So now. We know that y is equal to 4. See, here we said x was equal to the expression, y was equal to But we want to know what are the values of x and y. So now that we know what y equals, I can plug that value in for y in for the y over here. So I have x equals negative y plus 6. So now I take the value of y and I plug it in. Negative times negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 6 is x equals negative 2. So now, ladies and gentlemen, I know the value of 4, and I know the value of x. So now I can write that as a coordinate point, negative 2, comma 4. And that would be, if you were to graph these two lines, that's where they would intersect. Make sense? OK. Hold on one second. <laughs> 